I think we're live, right, Miguel? Yes. It's great to have you. Thank you. Uh, thanks for kicking it with KJ. Miguel Tarango. Morel Tarango. Morel. MT. Mattel. Yeah, MT. Is KJ a initials? Genius. K, KJ is, right? So K, I'm Kevin James. Oh, right. Kevin James. Uh, so okay. kicking it with Kevin James, KJ, um, Chief. Live from the Living Large Las Vegas Studios. Yeah, I've had all kinds of names, as most of us <laughs> probably have, right? Um, but, uh, man, Poppy so I'm gonna tell you, you know, I don't think me and Barry have done a good job as to communicating the why and, you know, living large, um, Las Vegas studios, they're, they're so awesome, right? You got, mm-hmm. you have Ben over here, uh, helping us out on the side and we never really communicated our why, why we're doing it. Right. And it wasn't until, you know, we had the logo that they were like, so, you know, I, what does the logo stand for? Right. And I was like, wow why are we even doing the podcast? Right. And <clears throat> so I was like, man, we've never communicated the why. And it's because every leader has a story. And even I think it should evolve because everybody's not a leader. I mean, let's just be real. They're not. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it may evolve again to everybody has a story. Um, but that's not a segue into you weren't a leader. Mm-hmm. So, Hey, psych. Welcome and tell us about yourself. Uh, well, my, again, like I said, my name is Miguel and, um, been out here in Vegas for about since 2003 when I got out of the Red Horse. Um, and I've been in the hospitality industry for about 12 years. Um, just fell into it. That's why I brought it up earlier that it's funny that I came from a dirt boys uh, world was the engineering world and just fell into um, services. Okay. Basically, you know, the service industry. Um. Before that, I mean, uh, I was in the Air Force for six years. Um, I served in Guyana and with uh, Barry here. Um, then we were in Iraq for a year, and uh, I was born and raised in Bakersfield. So okay, I joined when I was seventeen, and I had a little uh, life-changing event that happened in twenty fourteen. Uh, and uh, what was that? What happened to you? Well, uh, so. Okay, I'll jump in right into it. I, I at the time I was the assistant. Uh, I was manager of operations for Caesar's Palace, and uh, I assisted in opening uh, Nobu and on the beverage side because I I, I uh, controlled a lot of the beverage side, and I also uh, assisted in opening uh, Gordon Ramsay Pub. So I went about I wouldn't say about three months without a day off. Just, just helping. Welcome uh, to services. Yeah, exactly. Just, just making <laughs> taking sure. care of people. Don't take care of yourself. <laughs> well, we never rest, right? First in, <laughs> last out. So, and of course, just like the military, the gentlemen that were the representing Nobu, they they sent their own people to open, <clears throat> and they have a team, which is you can consider them the Advan team, and they they do everything that is required by Nobu and and what they what he likes um, and what they do. Then you got the gentleman that came from Gordon Ramsay Pub, and they they were doing their thing. And again, so then they need the guy that's already been in theater, which is at Caesars, to help them and show them the way, show them how to order things. Or, hey, how do we get this? How do we order this? How do we get that? What are the rules, especially with the unions? Can we do this? Can we do that? Can we hire this way? Anyways, long story short is... uh, I went up to uh, my vice president and I said, um, and my director, I had a meeting with them and they ha- we had a weekly meeting regarding the status of both venues and when we were going close to opening. I said, hey, can I get a- some time off and go home just to get, to get just to clear my head and, and, uh, and I'll be back right before the opening because I wanted to be part of that. Which was cool because I, g- I got to meet Robert De Niro because he's part owner of Nobu. Okay, okay. So that was kind of cool. So I go home. Did he have his platform shoes on? No. <laughs> he's actually not as tall as you think he would be. He's a, sh- he's a pretty short guy, but very, very <clears throat> personable, very, very humble man. I mean, he asked permission for everything. He even asked permission to go to the bathroom. Is it okay if I go to the bathroom? Is it okay? Yeah, sir, absolutely. Right over there. You talking to me? <laughs> So, um, you talking to me? He, uh, so I go home. 
I go and hang out with one of my buddies back downtown. Now I'm in Bakersfield. And uh, on the way, it was on a Tuesday. It was 7 p.m. on a Tuesday. The sun's still out going home. And uh, I remember listening to the radio. And there was this song on the radio. I, I can't remember. And I remember thinking, I can't believe people, some people don't tell artists, like, dude, this song isn't that good. Was it Making My Way Downtown? <laughs> No, no. Oh, <laughs> I was thinking air White supply. Chicks. What the hell? <laughs> so I'm heading there, and that's it. That's all I remember. I, I, I remember reaching to, excuse me, I remember reaching to change the channel. <laughs> this song sucks. <laughs> yeah, I said, oh, my God. We changed the channel. <laughs> Literally, that was my last thought, thinking, they, why do artists, I mean, I, there has to be art. Damn you, Debbie Gibson. There has to be artists that have managers and producers that say, come on, this is not going to work. But you know what? I'm, I'm thinking that's my opinion. That's one person's opinion against, you know, whatever. Right. What do I know? I'm not, I don't know nothing about the music industry. So karma, karma got you. Exactly. Having a bad thought or, or whatever, judging somebody was my last thought. And um, so the, apparently uh, I was told, and now I know, a lady had uh, what is the what is the disease or uh, COVID? No, Everything's no. COVID. COVID nineteen. She had COVID seventeen. I know. Right? No, the the where where people if they get elevated stress, they just faint. Narcolepsy. I believe so. Oh no, I know what you're talking about. It's like what the like what the the fainting goats have. I can't remember what. I don't it's, know. It's on the police report. We'll call it exhaust exhaustive fainting syndrome. We can call it whatever you want. <laughs> we'll say narcolepsy, even though that, isn't that the one that just, just people just fall asleep? Which was that one that just people like when they make fun of in movies that you know they just fall asleep. So Touché. that's what happened. No, no, the the lady <laughs> fainted. <laughs> I'm just saying we the, song, we the really, song was so bad. We really don't know what asleep. happened. <laughs> the lady faints. She faints. She's going uh, southbound. I'm going northbound. Her car hits the median. She was driving a, one of those bugs with the Torba logo on the back. So, you know, those things pick up quickly. She falls asleep. I mean, she faints. Excuse me. She faints. Her, her foot stays on the gas. Mm. She hits the median, goes airborne, knocks two trees out. Mind you, the two trees are little dinky trees, but she knocks two trees out and lands on top of my car. She hits me so hard. That she pushes my engine through my dashboard and the 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 engine actually sat on my legs. Oh damn. And yes, on my on on my end, I failed to put on my seatbelt. I never I didn't even wear one when I was in Iraq. So I've never worn a seatbelt. And I was raised my my dad drove a sixty one and Ford Ranchero and right. my first car was a sixty eight Buick and I didn't I've never whatever. My first car was an eighty seven Converse. He, oh, the shoe. He didn't wear a seatbelt and he's still here. Yeah. Well, it's because he had an engine on his lap. It just yeah. made him stay in the car. Yeah. <laughs> wear your seatbelts. Yeah, definitely. I, that's now one lesson that. Uh, but to be fair, sometimes I think about it. I believe that everything happens for a reason. Right. I sometimes wonder that if I would have worn my seatbelt, because when I was in the hospital, because I was in the hospital for three months, right. and my first month there, I heard of an individual through the nurses that did everything right he was t-boned mind you that's a right. different angle that you're getting hit but he was t-boned wearing a seatbelt, younger kid right um like by five years he died on the scene and what killed him was the seatbelt snapped his neck because yeah. he did the whole snap right so i'm thinking to myself i wonder if me wearing my seatbelt was a good thing or a bad thing right but to Barry's point, absolutely the engine being pin, pinning my legs kept me from flying out the wow. out, out of the windshield. Because I was thinking a joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, that got real dark. <laughs> well, so, joke, jokes on me. Yeah, I I, I actually uh, we all know that the new, all modern cars now have that uh, safety glass now. Right. So every time you hit something, it gets that alligator skin looking going. Mm -hmm. I hit the windshield so hard that I actually punctured. Um, like a hole hole and um so i i, I hit so i hit i whiplash 
hit the windshield, come back, slam against the, my seat, go back forward again, and my rear view mirror is what cut me right here. Oh, as okay. you can, mm. So I basically was, I mean, I looked like I was scalped do by you, my car. Do you just use that as a tough guy story when people mess with you? No, actually, I, I like to fight with a Volkswagen and I won. I actually like to <laughs> don't tell f people, with me. I actually, I actually like to tell people that that God, you know, he took his time to put this together. He didn't want to mess this up, so he was well, nice he, enough to just give it to me right here on the hairline, nice. where it doesn't hurt anybody. Mm. Just doesn't mess up the do. This is, <laughs> by the way, I, I actually shave my head only by mistake because during this quarantine, I tried to cut my own hair. You know, we all are not blessed with a cool beard and a cool haircut. And I actually messed up. So I said, screw it. And I shave my head. So I never really have this hair this short. So, And I forget okay. how long and how big my <laughs> scar is. I can see my reflection. I just looked at herself in the, in the, the window. <laughs> yeah. So, so let me ask you something then. Since, since we're going to deviate a little bit off of this, right? Okay. Um, or we can't. We can go back to it, right? Because you mentioned a few things that, mm-hmm. that stood out, right? Um, a dark place, end of selfishness, and home sweet home. Mm-hmm. And those obviously are very sign- – those are what stuck, stood out the most to me in your list, right? But it's funny because you talked about Bakersfield, and now you live in Las Vegas. Um, so I'm going to kind of change channels. And so, you know, there's a thing about California people moving to Las Vegas, right? I'm sure Correct. you've heard of it, right? I'm, oh, I'm, absolutely. I'm, I'm one of them, right? So so what what, what would you say to that thought? Like you obviously chose Las Vegas, right? And Let's do it here. Let's so, do it. I actually am talking to one of my best friends from uh, junior high and elementary junior, childhood friend. Right. And uh, he's saying, he was asking me, hey, man, it's getting ridiculous in California. Right. And I said, and I knew, but I, 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 I like to learn from people. So I said, well, I, everybody's perspective is different. So I, so I asked him, I said, well, how so? He said, well, it goes these taxes are getting ridiculous. Right. And I said, okay, you're going to, you're going to play the, which is fine. The tax card. That's what he, you know, some people just the, the laws and the taxes It's usually one or one or the other or both. Right. And then he says, well, we're thinking about, and lo and behold, I cut him off and I said, Texas or, or here. Right. Right. He goes, yeah, I'm thinking either Nevada, not to mention he's a stupid Raider fan. But, Oh, you gotta like the Raiders now that you live in. No, Las negative. Vegas. I don't. I don't. Do you, Barry? You like the Raiders? You do you have to like the Raiders? I don't have to like anyone. <laughs> and I, and that's what I choose. He I don't choose like. Do you feel I obligated? Used to, I used to pick and pick and choose who I want to like and dislike. You cannot tell me. He only likes me you on Fridays. You can't force me. And when I'm that's barbecue, why it's scheduled barbecue, today, yeah. which is pretty much every day. <laughs> 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 Coming over. What are we having? Barbecue. So so it's funny you said that because. Um, I was going to go back to California and, you know, to be honest with you politically, and I just don't care for it. I think the politics are ruining the state. Mm-hmm. Um, absolutely. culturally, I love it. Right. I love no, the absolutely, culture yeah, of absolutely. it. Um, but, uh, Las Vegas was close enough to get home to family in California and, and I just love it here. You know, no state taxes. Um, yet, yet. Yeah. Well, I don't mind as long as it benefits. Right. Which we've seen, we've played that card. I have a friend uh, that I talk to all the time who was in the, the marijuana business. Right. And I was like, yeah, I said, I, I said, I, I said, I voted growing for or that. smoking. Both. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> Is he a street um, pharmacist? I think so. Okay. So, no, I think it's professional because, you know, it's legal here. Right. But oh, yeah, they absolutely. talked about that union. Why would you, anybody do it now illegally? Right. Well, they're unionized. Right. So I was like, you know, when I voted for it originally in California, right, when I was there, I was like, OK, so if they're going to tax it. Is it going to go to the schools? Is it going to go to the communities? And there's this big debate on where actually that that money has gone, right? And so, but yeah, I, I love it here, man. And, and I think we share the same sentiments um, on that. Um, it, it, it was funny, but when I first started living out here, again, I, and, I, and I'm not going to say that I was, I moved out here. I was forced to be out here because I came from Hill Air Force Base. Okay. So the military, uh, when people are like, oh, because uh, you, you hear it a lot from locals when you first move out here. Oh, you're from California. You're one of those California guys that just moved out. Technically, no. I, right. The military brought me here. I didn't, I didn't choose. I mean, Nevada was never a thought in growing up in Bakersfield, never a thought. Um, and uh, 
Vegas wasn't even. I mean, maybe because I was underage. I joined when I was seventeen, so I didn't even. I didn't even care about Kevin, Vegas. Or, you were seventeen when you went in too, right? Yeah, my dad said uh, you're not college material. So, <laughs> thanks <laughs> for the support, Dad. <laughs> He's sitting out in the uh, waiting room too, by the way. Well, he had a <laughs> he had a report card that validated it. So, <laughs> a gym, a lunch, yeah. <laughs> lunch. I had all A's. <laughs> Fighting, uh, B minus. B minus. Uh, took took, took a couple of losses, but I but I gave my lumps. Right. So that's how I got here, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, at one point in time, I was going to get out as a master sergeant, um, and uh, via active duty service commitments and promotions and moves, promotion service commitment, then they forced me to move, which is another service commitment. And next thing you know, because that's at, what the Air Force does, right? They 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 want you to get. Yeah. Uh, as much as uh, you can under your belt so they can uh, justify or not maybe not justify right. is the right word but so it's easier to to, to slide in the next stripe yeah. at least the, f- from my perspective that's what i thought um, it was so no so i didn't think i would ever see senior right so airman well i was yeah senior airman right <laughs> which is uh so. which uh, is <laughs> e4 folks <laughs> <laughs> so somehow some way so i went from uh i was a master sergeant um for twice like seven right? years well and maybe twice i don't know so i was like yeah i'm never gonna get promoted um and then the air force moved me from travis to langley made senior um they were nice enough to bless me with another tour to afghanistan and just before i went they said yeah you gotta leave right i was like i just got here They're like yeah we're overmanned and you know i was like well yeah you overmanned us right and i won't get into that story my household goods maybe, haven't even maybe here one yet. october when i have that blue id card i'll get into that story um <clears throat> but uh I wasn't there three years, and they moved me to McCord, and they made chief. But you didn't want to months. leave, right? You, you were, you were. I wanted to retire. Oh, okay. I wanted to retire, and they forced me to move before my service commitment was up. So I wasn't eligible. You know what I mean? So, um, but it's okay, because I think, I believe that. Everything happens for a reason. Everything happens for a reason, and we get where we're supposed to get. Absolutely. Because we're supposed to be there. Because, look, had I not been forced to come to beautiful Las Vegas, I'd have never realized that's where home should be. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be sitting here with you. Uh, Barry wouldn't have come back. Um and launched Exercise Elite, um, I met my, you know, I mean, it was just so much goodness from it, right? And, and a lot of the times I tell people, you know, when you're talking about every leader has a story, every person has a story, right? I said, but you never know what your, your um, happy ending is. And I know Barry will chime in with some nasty thought on happy ending, right? But you'll no. never know where your happy ending is, <clears throat> right? Not if, today. if you give up. Correct. Right? And a lot of times we quit and give up because things aren't going our way. You know, like Barry said, like people don't know, right? Like I was struggling to make staff sergeant. It wasn't until he handed me staff sergeant stripes because I was an airman. He was an NCO and he said, this is your year to make it. And I made it. Right. And so you, you can't give up. Right. But so I always do a game and I usually do it a little bit earlier. Right. And so if you're down to play, man, I've wrote some, uh, I wrote some questions down based okay. on what little I knew of you. Okay. Um, and I think you can relate because you have deployments, right? Correct. And, and to this day, right, if Tony Singletary is listening, um, Tony, I still think me and Tony were Happy absolutely ending. the best spades and domino players downrange. Like, I think we were undefeated. Um, so here Every, we go. I think everybody says they were undefeated in spades. No, but mine's real. Uh, Touche. <laughs> <laughs> it's documented. It's right? yes. It's, right. it's confirmed. Tony, ask, it's confirmed. Tag Tony on this one and ask him if it's true. Don't ask him about shit the, talking Tony. The, the racket ball racket. Oh yeah, I already know about that one. Oh, you know that story. I was right. working the desk when you turned it in. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Here we go. You ready, Miguel? Yeah. All right. Go. Here we go. Right. So I kind of gave you a segue into right. So what's taken more seriously, indirect fire, or games like spades and dominoes? I connect, I'm going to add something real, real quick to that. Okay. Or that deployment movie that passes around to everybody 50 or 60 times during one deployment. Like ours was Night at the Roxbury. Oh. <laughs> ours was um, Anchorman. Anchorman. Yeah. Or are we talking about those, that DVD that says uh, family pictures? And when we all know it, it's not family pictures. <laughs> Family pictures. Family pictures. Right. Though. So let's, yeah, yeah. let's stick with, I actually, let's no, stick with the indirect uh, fire let's, and dumb let's, let's, <laughs> let's yeah, leave it up to Barry to, yeah, to, to add a whole yeah, other yeah, yeah. sidebar. Um, to be honest, I actually think that, uh, you know, uh, we got to kill time. If not, we go crazy. And the gaming, the gaming was a big deal. 
the gaming. I've seen guys not talk to each other for a, a couple of days, and it's already bad enough that we're limited to the same group of guys. Or a tent. Yes, absolutely. And especially if uh, you guys are in the same rank, at, at least if you're higher rank and you stay in the, you know, sergeant's and NCO tent, you know, that's a whole other thing. But And that sucks because you can make your life miserable. But when you're with one of the young guys, there's I've seen straight up fights because of that. Yeah. And direct fire, eh, it happens. It is what it is. I guess we kind of brush it off more than we. I learned how to play euchre, um, bones, um, maybe. And Dom, dominoes for you it, white people? Yeah, dominoes. Don, bones. We call yeah, them dominoes bones. for you white yeah. people. We're not talking about dominoes pizza. Yeah. And bones. I, you need <sighs> to slam the table. On yeah. the last down, or it doesn't count. Yeah, and if the if it does if the bone doesn't fly off the table, you you done lost. <laughs> you done lost. <laughs> but no, absolutely, it's it's all right, definitely. Because well, you know, a lot of times us veterans, mm -hmm. right? Um, we get a lot of stories. People don't get to go and experience that all the time. Correct. You know, and most people relate. And you know that that was something I was thinking. I was like, man, I was like, I saw potentially more uh, altercations over. Mm -hmm. A dominoes or spades game, then indirect fire came down. They'd be like, ah, they're just rocketing us again, you know, they're shooting mm -hmm. at us again, right? So, okay, 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 all right. Here's one, right? Funniest story about Barry that even someone like me oh, God. does not know. Uh, uh, cut the mic, please. <laughs> <laughs> so, we were in uh, South America. Commercial. <laughs> cut we the mic. You can't get mad. I won't get mad. I'll get even. Just can we can go for it? Can I do it in my Jocko voice? If you need to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we were in, in South America. Uh, we were in Guyana. And um, they had something over there called grenades, which is basically they look like, uh, you know how you go to 7-Eleven and you, go, you can buy those janky vodka horrible hangover you can just see a hangover happening those little balls yeah. with the with the neon inside of them yeah the neon green but they're uh, an alcoholic drink well imagine those uh but they're full of rum right and those were called grenades so we get a bunch of grenades get the night going we go to a strip club in guyana um, this is all unverified by me mind you and by the way i'm i i Full disclosure, I have a brain injury, so I could be making this up. <laughs> um, so we go to strip club, have a great time. Um, literally, um, for uh, us, f I, I think bottle service was maybe $2 or $1.50 or something like that for a bottle. Oh, wow. So, so I, 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 I literally um, went in there with, uh, I want to say, $15. And I was a mid-player baller. Mid-player baller, I like that. Well, you know, I stayed in my lane, but I was good enough to know, like, I can make, I can change one of these girls' life just with those. Well, especially with hostile fire pay or your three fifty a day per diem. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's a shot at me or <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> so here comes Barry, chest out, red hair, white guy, blue eyes, vibrant. Uh, I, I I mean I was so dark back muscular then, uh, just being out in the sun that I I can pass by uh, you know by a Guyanese because we were in you know it's the border between Brazil and there was some Brazilian girls there okay so um anyways long story short is we ended up going there we have a great time the girls have absolutely gravitated towards us and to be fair we, it felt like we were the only ones there there was other people there but it, it was mostly for you know we were the Americans mm. So then we get uh, we get to the point where we have so much fun that we say let's take it let's take it up a notch. We're gonna take it. We're gonna how many notches? Just I know berry notches. One, one, one berry <laughs> notch. If that's if, the, if that's the scale I'm going by, one, one berry notch. regular person notch is nine. Mine is one. <laughs> I <laughs> especially after about seven grenades. Yeah, I don't I I I I, I don't want to even assume how much money Barry had. But again, mind I you, had three dollars. It, it's not. It wasn't. It didn't take much to get to baller status there. Like I said, I was. Right. I consider myself mid, mid with mid baller with fifteen bucks. So we ended up taking it in uh, the party to the next level, 
and we go back to the hotel. We mm. ended up getting a hotel downtown because if we were already downtown, might as well. Yeah. That <laughs> ended up going to wee hours in the morning, but we were doing, I mean, it was such a good time. Um, in retrospect, as much as fun time as we had without getting too ridiculous. But it was one of those experiences that I remember that it didn't take much. Like for instance, uh, champagne and a steak dinner was like three seventy five. Oh wow, three dollars and seventy five cents. Okay, and I remember Barry just buying bar the b- whole bar, and then getting upset because the the booze was running out and we needed more. To the point where, like, does that here. tie into where your alcohol inventory was off? Story, <laughs> probably. <laughs> I mean, I, I have no idea. All I know, I remember him being that the services guys that he is and that he wanted to keep it going, the logistics right. going per se. Let, let me give him a little, little credit here. Little. I did not take the government vehicle and go get more booze. I did not. He ended up strategically uh, speaking to the guy in charge and says, what is it going to take to get this party going? He's all like, well, you guys cleared us all out and we weren't expecting, because this is what, it wasn't even a weekend. Yeah. Mm. He says, we weren't even expecting our, our booze here. So anyways, that's, that's the story. He ends up going and telling this guy, excuse me, he goes, whatever it takes, let's make this happen. I have a car outside, uh, unmarked. Statutory limitations passed on this one? Oh, way way passed, okay. Yeah. And again, I can't confirm or deny that it was a government vehicle. Um, could have been a taxi for I remember. And uh, next thing you know, they disappear and reappear with a bunch of grenades, which is those <laughs> rums, <laughs> and a crap load of more booze. And we just kept. And it was go, it was go time. It was go time. Good story. Yeah. It was the best night. It was one of the best nights of my life, and it only cost me fifteen bucks. And I, <laughs> fifteen <laughs> bucks. And I was. I remember it, I, it, there was a, all, every single working girl, a young lady was just working, 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 you know. I like that. So that ties me into my last Helping question. the economy, the Guyanese guy economy. Well, that's like, um, you know, the big, the big debate about you're a scumbag if you don't push your shopping cart back to the, the shopping cart little area. Mm-hmm. But if you don't, aren't you keeping somebody employed? When they have to go out there and collect it, aren't you generating an opportunity for innovation when they have to create that little power cart to, I don't know, and you're letting someone get some uh, physical activity, right? They got to go get those carts. So what I did was when I saw that post, I did what- That's a valid, I've never even thought of that one there, right? Well, I did what any good person would do. Pushed it all the way to to the 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 end. Yeah, high five. Till the the lock on the wheel engaged. (laughs) Um, So if you see a target cart right next to in and out a mile down the street, uh, that was not me. Okay. Oh, no, God. I didn't do that. I'm just mm-hmm. joking. So, all right, last question, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because you were talking about stuff, and, you know, this is like, you know, for those folks out at uh, the Fox Sports Bar and stuff, and, you know, services, and, mm-hmm. you know, we always got to give a shout out. I mean, I 28-year legacy services dude, right? And they're retired as FSS chief, right? All right. So, of the two, what unit really matters downrange? For support squadron? Or four support squadron. To me, personally, Ding. HVAC to me was the one. Because mm. you got to exactly. remember, these guys give you the Wi-Fi. These guys give you that AC. And sometimes that's all yeah. that you need. Oh, man, I'll tell you. <laughs> you don't have to pick them, Barry. <laughs> but he did say he has TBI. That's right. Oh, I have a traumatic that, brain injury. Oh, now, 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 now my TBI just kicked in. That's what it is. <laughs> okay, I can live with that. So just so you know, behind the scenes, you know, any good force support chief, mm-hmm. right, whether they know it or not, or they're directed, <clears throat> they absolutely always get along with the CE chief. You know, so them engineers. Well, yeah, you, know, you guys got to work hand in hand to provide yeah. that service. Yeah. That, I mean, to, to my understanding and the way I see it is, uh, basic, uh, especially being from the service industry outside of the military, um, 
you find out who your audience is, who your who your customer is. For you, it's you know your units and and your military men and women, and you provide them the best of your abilities. A little normancy, like something normal. Mm-hmm. That'll be a gym, a tent, to, a recreation tent, a, a table to play bones at, or something. And um, what are the the call tents or whatever? Mm-hmm. And um, and absolutely, that's 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 what I thought the main mission yeah. per se. Truth, truth be told, everybody's important. So, no, no, but I'm absolutely. a force port guy, so I had to throw it out there, right? So let me ask you as as we start getting close to wrapping up, um, if you wanted to be found, mm-hmm. which you may or may not, right? Mm-hmm. Where can where can people find you? Do you have a, a social media page? Um, oh, I just have my own personal stuff. I mean, it's nothing to be. Um, it's just M Tarango Jr. for Junior at, on Facebook and on Instagram. Pretty simple. I, I dig it, man. Keep it simple. Keep it Absolutely. simple. Absolutely. Right. And so as, as as we get ready to leave, you know, there's something that echoed in my head uh, this week and I had shared it with uh, Kobe in there. And it was, you know, we need to create a community of care the way we created a community of consumption. And. I don't see a whole lot of that going around right now. You know, I see a whole lot of uh, like, you know, on Facebook, I posted like, oh, hey, there, I just posted my opinion. That should solve all the problems. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so I appreciate you coming on board, man. Um, uh, we love having everybody on here. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, you're a longtime friend of Barry. You're a veteran. Mm-hmm. Right. You yes. serve our country. So thank you for your service. You got to be a services guy. Right. Um, and I'm just grateful to meet you. So um, thank you. On that note, Barry, take us out of here, man. Hey, everyone. Thanks again for joining us on Kicking It With KJ here from the Las Vegas Living Large Studios. Uh, Miguel, thanks, man. It Thank was, you, uh, brother. It was I great, appreciate it. Great catching up with you. Um, hey, folks, remember, you can make a difference in people's lives. All right. We've got far too much bullshit going on out in the world today. Be a positive example to folks. We'll see you next time. Peace. Later.